Hello people, how are you doing? Um, hope everyone can uh, hear everything okay. Um, just coming on now, um, I'm just going to run a little tune. So we'll do a little test of the audio. Uh, I've got it running on several pages. I can see the comments over here on um, the vital one. So if you want to comment on there, do so. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with all the comments on the different pages that it's on. So if you want to interact, come to the Vital Elements page and do it there. I've got it next to me here, I can see. So I'm just going to run a little track, um, get a few more people on, test the audio, and then we'll, we'll run through and go through some of the referencing stuff that I'm doing, how I set things up, and uh, run through some of the tracks that's been sent over since earlier when I put a post up. I hope you're all doing good. Here you go. something that I've got there a uh, track of making and I'm just going to go through uh, how and why I have my setup like I do um, and the importance of referencing or A and B in um, other people's music that you're um, aspiring to or that is in a similar genre to you or that you just want to you know see where everyone's hitting and where you where you want to hit so there's a few things that I've got um, if you haven't seen um, my set up your own default video um, I'd advise you watch that afterwards so that you understand why I set up groups and um, how this sort of reference track system works uh, with it as it were um, Uh, just mute the audio over on my computer over there because I'm getting a little bit of it coming through. So, as I, if you've done any of you at my masterclass, there's a few people that have done them that will be on, and there's a few people that might have seen some of the stuff before, um, or you may well be new to it. But uh, as you can see, I like working uh, with groups and with colours, and and so this is folder tracks, 
and also um, group tracks when I've got a big project as well. Now this is a stemmed um, mix this is, so this would have been, you know, like 80 odd tracks or whatever, and then it's all been bounced down. And now it's in a much more cleaner project and it's stemmed. So I still keep the color code so I know where everything is and I still keep it together in the groups that, it, that, that they were. Um, and then I have something down here. Now, when I did the masterclass um, last time, I didn't go too much over um, the referencing. It, it, there was a lot of stuff done individually and working on the stuff, making the stuff, etc. Uh, and I touched upon it, um, but I think it's really important to sort of see how good this sort of system is and how um, sort of close you can get to what you want within the project um, with this system. So as you'll see here, I have my track up here. Um, all being sent through if I pull over um, my mixer you can see that everything's being pulled through here and into um, various this is my group so if I play it you'll see what's coming out here so I've got a drums track um, a stem this is slightly different to uh, my other default video one where I had lots of stems drums leads vocals etc like I said this has been bounced down now so I've just got you know each stem in an individual track uh, then my drums because they're kick stem snare stem and percussion stem I then bounce them into another group as well so here I've just got three groups for this sort of stem mix down stage and the the important group here is 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 this one the postmaster and i've touched on it on other videos but the reason for this is, is so that you can reference within your project so what i do you notice everything's going into groups and because it's all into going into groups what that means is all my audio isn't coming out of my main out and so all these plugins and all these stages of processing and stuff is all done before my main out you look at my main out here um i've just got analyzers on it uh nothing but um stuff to you know look at the audio analyze the audio see what's going on none of the plugins are done or anything that's why i'm using a group system with you know pre-masters post-masters and then another out uh for when i want to go analog um so this system allows your main out to be free of plugins and sat at 0 db so that you can have in the bottom of your file at all times reference tracks which are fully mastered finished tracks that you know sound good and that are what you're aiming for and you can have them at the bottom and you can basically a and b very simply so i'll give you an example So you, you see, I've got everything lined up here. I can have a couple of styles of tunes. I can have vocal stuff if I'm working with vocal stuff. Whatever you want, whatever sort of peer group or um, you know tracks that you're really feeling, you line up here and they're set up to your main out. And because of the group grouping system, um, you've got everything free on your. Um, on your other outputs, every, everything that's sort of free on your main output and everything sort of working into your group outputs. So your group outputs end up having all the plugins, having all the stuff on them. And like I said, you have a free track down the bottom for referencing. Um, now, when I start making something, I'll start with beats quite often, you know, so now and again, it's a sample, but most of the times I start with beats, then bass, and then just go straight into it. Now, I will have this loaded as a default project. And that's why I'm saying, look at my default project. The amount of time it takes to set up groups, set up colors, set up effect sends and stuff like this is quite time consuming. So for workflow, this is my default project. And I will have reference tracks, not that many, but I will have reference tracks, few reference tracks in there so that as soon as I'm working and as soon as I'm straight onto kick drums and as soon as I'm straight on the snare drums, I know that I am at the level that I need to be. And uh, like I was saying, with with this sort of system, um, you don't have to be as loud as everyone. 
you can come back to 0 db on this system like i said you need to watch my default video setup to fully understand this but this is you know a mix that i would send that isn't loud um, and then because of this system and how i've explained it in my default video all i do is push this up to get the loudness So you can see I've gone right up, I've got um, True Peaks going over, I'm really pushing it, it's really loud. Now I can work out what sort of level I need to be with the other tracks. So, you know, if I put up this canine tune, Hospital Records, Hospital always master their stuff. It's not ridiculously pumped and loud, but it's, it's nice. Um, there's usually quite a nice level throughout some of their stuff. Um, so something like this, we can look on the master, uh, on the... Um, analyzers there's one analyzer you can see there running i i'd highly recommend these spectrograms when you see in the color there you can see up here is the decibels and along is the frequencies um uh the, the um frequencies are running 20 hertz uh down the bottom to 20 kilohertz up the top and the color being red being 0 db so anything that's hitting really heavy you will see coming up as oranges and, and reds, you know. And if you're not quite hitting right, then you will see that in those colours. Now, that is one of my favourite analyzers for really having a visual reference to how fat your kicks and drums and stuff like that are. When you've got that spectrogram, that colour, um, doesn't take too much to understand it. Once you start looking at them and reading stuff through there, you can see how they're working. You start to be able to visually see your kicks and your snares and your bass and your leads. You can see where they're hitting and where they're coming and you can see clashes, etc. Really, really great, great tool. Now, another one which is free uh, that I use um, is this one, uh, which will be the next up. Um, this is computer music and this gives you a couple of little options you've got a stereo field it's quite important these days having wide stuff stuff with very very wide um, you know full uh, full spectrum full uh, left and right channels going on obviously you've got to watch for phase you don't want it cancelling in mono and stuff but um, this analyzer is brilliant for reading your, your width if you have a look now um, you can see the top section there is the mid and the bottom section there is the is the side information so you can really see how much you've got going on um and this one's what's happening in the bottom so there's something that you can see there it's always rolled off at the bottom with the bass you know you look at any good professional producer they will be pretty much mono in the bass frequencies um, unless they're doing something creative for an effect um, uh, just just answering I can I can only see like one of the chats on here because um, I'm doing this and I've got all the computers going and people are saying is this Cubase yes this is Cubase so uh, I just like to say um, anyone who's you know looking to do the master classes uh, the welcome to the jungle master class big up to all the jungle cakes crew everyone who's locked on on those pages and, and joined through there um, if you're looking to do the class, we are starting it on Monday again, running it again, and um, we will be using Cubase, using Reason, but I'll get a lot of questions about, you know, does it matter what door you use? It really doesn't. It really doesn't. Uh, as you see here, I, all I'm setting up here is groups, you know, in Logic, that's called auxes, I think. Um, or maybe buses, you know, so I'm just setting out groups folder tracks and and then you know At the bottom is my reference tracks in the folder tracks. I'm just rooting things through the mixer um, You know fairly differently all of this is possible in Cubase in logic in um, Ableton in fruity They just have slightly different names. They just use things slightly differently um, it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, I'm not in these class. I'm not going into great detail on how to do stuff in Cubase. I'm more going into detail in how to, um, uh, more going detail in how 
the principles are being used you know what 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 you're doing what you're eqing what you're looking for level wise what you're looking for with frequencies being put in the right place what you're looking for with musicality spacing on frequencies and stuff like that um you know if you're a complete beginner then you just really won't sort of um you know, you need to sort of learn the basics of your software. And we're going to be doing some courses and we've got some people to teach that will help with that. Um, but the courses that I'll be doing, the basic one, you know, you, you kind of just need to know your way around the software a little bit. And I will explain everything else in greater detail, EQ, etc. And the, the main course is, is more for people who know a little bit what they're doing. They've been doing it for at least sort of six months or so, all the way up to years and years. And, and you're wanting to learn workflow you want to have a peek into a you know studio where someone's released hundreds of releases and, and what they're looking at and what they're doing and what have you um and, and you're looking to better yourself in the scene um so these these are some tunes that i've got sent um so within this system i can now have a little look at what's going on um how you know what frequencies are hitting you know so this is something i'll do when when i get a load of stuff sent we're always signing stuff for the label i like it to be downloadable you know people will send the odd link but you know i want i want to analyze the music i want to get it i want to bring it into the studio i want to look at it through analyzers i want to check it and see if it's compatible in stereo and mono um i i want to look at the waveforms and see how squashed they are i want to look at the true peak and see how over the true peak or if they know what they're doing um regarding that uh, i mean most drum and bass don't they're all over but um it, i will show you here it is possible to have loud music without the true peak clipped um, so we're going to have a little listen through. Um, there's a few things I've been sent, uh, and this is one that, you know, I'm quite impressed with. Shaper is someone uh, who I think we've released something with on the mixtape. Don't think he's had a single, uh, an EP or anything yet. He sent this over, and um, what I would describe this mix is as modern. Um, you know, years ago, like RMS didn't hit to the same level. A lot of stuff didn't hit to the same level. So this one, it'd be modern. Now, uh, my phone's going off the hook, so I'm just going to look at that, catch up with a few messages, see if what you guys are saying. So we'll have a little listen to this tune, and then we'll, you know, have a, have a little critique on it, see what he's done, have a look at the analyzers and see, you know, what's right and what's wrong technically. Um, I doubt there's much wrong, though. Um, there usually isn't in this music. There's no right and wrong uh, unless it's very, very bad, you know. Uh, it's just a lot of personal opinion and preference, and that's what I'll go through with this, and I'll show you how different everything is, you know, from tune to tune, as it were. So this this one's Shaper. Uh, I'm going to let this one roll, and then I'm just going to catch up with messages and stuff and see uh, everyone's uh, watching okay. <laughs> What you can see here, if you look at that analyzer, is he, uh, Shaber's got his kick drum as the loudest thing in this tune. Uh, sometimes people choose different things with drum and bass. Sometimes the snare can be the peakiest thing, uh, especially back in the days when that 200 hertz snare was, was a really popular thing. 
Um, now a lot of people are going with their kick drums. You know, still, you know, like jungle tends to be the bass, still the peakiest thing. But um, we've, you know, a lot of drum and bass, a lot of jump up and stuff. The basses tend to be tucked down. The kick drum's a bit more out there. And even with jump up, the leads are a lot more out there and, and in your face and the bass is down. And, and we've... Um, as, you, as you'll come to see when we're referencing, it's always a balance. It's always, you know, a compromise. Like if you're really loud with your bass, you probably can't be really loud with your kick as well, um, you know, or, or have them in similar frequencies. And then you're going to have to side chain and do various, various different things to deal with them. So we'll, we'll play this one again. And then uh, the points I'll be looking at is this, the, the, the analyzer up here. Um, and th this is really sort of, um, you know, hitting on the kick drums up at these sort of levels so if we have a little look so you can see that really high kick bass just a little bit under and then very nice and flat uh, throughout the rest of the frequency range, which is something you're kind of looking for. Um, you know, quite quite a nice sort of uh, mix on that. It's very in your face. Kick drum really hits you. It's very modern with that sort of thing. Um, so that's something from Shaper. Now, uh, there was something here from Tim, and I want to play this. This was um, a guy uh, who was on the class the other week, uh, tracking title, Boldy Locks. Now, um, I was saying a few things on, on the... Um, class last week which you know i will repeat here because the reason being so what tim's done is tim sent me out an unmastered version he sent me out a version where um you know if you're looking at your mix down the it's not pushed this, this sort of output everything's still hitting under zero etc there's headroom you know this is the sort of thing that would go for mastering now the only thing is that i would address with this is when you're sending stuff to DJs and when you're sending stuff out, so today I said, right, send me some tunes. So this is what I've been sent in. Um, I've been sent in um, this from uh, Davey. Uh, Are you doing an experiment? I've been sent in this from Shape Up. Been sent in this from uh, Erdman. Uh, this from uh, Minor Flux. And this one from Boldy Box Tim. So you can really hear the difference in levels between all those, all those masters and, and, and all those sort of track, you know, sendings, as it were. And this is something that I would say you have to have um, your stuff, which is just basically matching your peer group. So if your peer group is loud, if your if your if your genre is loud, when you're sending something out to someone, it needs to be loud. Um, yeah, I can look at that and know that that's a pre-master and it hasn't been pushed to be loud. But a lot of DJs don't open it up and look at it. They just play it. And so that is just going to play next to the track that's really pushed and loud and mastered as super quiet. And sometimes the peak levels might be quite similar. They might be, you know, almost the same. Um, so anyone that's just a DJ, which is a lot of people, they're just going to turn that one away you know just not even acknowledge it because of the fact that it's just not presented at the right level um so uh to shout to you tim for sending that the system i was saying where you do the loud sort of section and do the loud mix through the postmaster that is the sort of version you should send out so that when someone is referencing like this and pulling up against everything else, it's at least at that level. Now, I could master that and bring it up, but I wouldn't want to be mastering, you know, people's stuff just, just to hear it, uh, you know, at the sort of level that everyone else is at. Um, so that's an important thing. Make sure you, you know, don't send out just clips or, or, or just demos that are un unmastered, unfinished. 
um, send out you know even if it is unfinished send it out so it's loud uh, and, and that's why I'm saying with this system you you have this postmaster so just to go through this like I said you've got to watch the default video but just to go through this I'll give you an example very quickly So that's the mix I want to send, not the one at North. And if you look, um, if you look at the uh, peak meter on on the analyzer here on the, on this one that I've got on the screen, so the inside two is the peak, uh, the peak level, and the outside two is the RMS level. And what you'll notice is when you you know you've got something that hasn't been pushed and it's it's not been mastered, you'll notice that the RMS level is much lower. Um, so I'll give you an example of that. Um, the track that uh, got sent in by Dave um, here, the RMS levels are not loud enough. Um, so if you watch the peak meters, you'll see what I mean. Are you doing an experiment? You can see it's it's just about hitting minus five. You know, that's kind of that's kind of not far off, it's kind of alright, probably would have been alright years ago, but it just needs that little bit more pushing and compression just to get it so that it's you know that one's like two or three more db just up over minus five there and then you've got various other ones so if you go for something modern and new that's just completely clipped um and then watch the levels on it Now, there is something you'll notice on that, those big red lines there hitting over. That basically is over. It hasn't been normalized to minus one dB or naught dB afterwards, after you've bounced the track. Now, a lot of people in drum and bass do that. They literally just send it out clipped. You know, that, that, that's the master clipping. Um, I would pull people up on that and say, don't do that. Like literally, do not do that you will make that pop on certain systems. If you've got a VLC player, anyone who uses the VLC player, had this a while ago with Serums tunes, it's just coming out the master clips, you know, redlining out the master. It's like, oh, if that's how you want to get your loudness, that's fine, you know, each to their own. However, you need to take, open that in an editor afterwards and just normalize it because some programs, like, are just reading that as over and, you know, I'd play it and it would just be popping and popping and, you know, no one else's was, just those ones. And that's the same sort of thing. When you're when you're when you're over and you've clipped, when it comes to putting it onto an analog format, i.e., going down a speaker, uh, going down cable, going down you know um, the internet, whatever, your overs are over and they will turn into distortion and pop and destroy your music. So drum and bass is loud. And needs to be loud, but it doesn't need to be ruined. Uh, and and as an example, I will show you an example on, on on that now. So, what we're looking for here is the true peaks. So I'm going to go into true peaks a little bit. Um, so I'll move this to the side so that I can see both screens. So what you're looking at here is the true peak, um, just down on this section here, and. saying 2.5 there so that's quite quite a clip true peak let's have a little look at some others let's see what shape because he was quite loud so he's probably clipped quite a lot in his true peak Why did this man so deserve to die? 
so their average is in 2.5 2.7 on the true peak uh clipped now every plugin that is worth its weight um as a mastering plugin does have the option to take off your true peak clipping um i wouldn't advise it highly for a dance floor mix if you've got a good mix you know it gives you that tiny bit more presence I would highly advise it when you're sending your stuff for streaming and platforms and, and anything where it's going to be encoded because when you're peaked your true clip, they will, it just ruins it. It's basically um, over samples which um, get folded back down and come back as noise rather than as, as um, harmonic um, distortion. So uh, a track um, that I've done is something I released a little while ago. Um, I think it was my last release on V2E. So we just listen to the sort of level difference and then watch the true peaks. Um, I'll show you that it is possible to have it loud as drum and bass needs to be with the true peak uh, still good. So we'll have a little listen through. <laughs> That's that one. K91, we'll have a little look, see where that's at. Hospital Records, that's so it's usually quite good. Oh, we say that. That one's got the biggest true peak clip, that one. 3.5, biggest one so far. Doesn't sound the loudest though, does it? You know. Got a spy tune here. So just to show you it is possible, um, here's a track that I did earlier uh, or released before and if you have a look at the True Peak you can get it just as loud without the True Peak problems. So that over something like that. Or even the K91 with a lot more True Peak. It's just, it's just gonna, it's just gonna give you some problems when it comes to converting stuff. Um, you know, there is ways of doing this, like over sampling and and um, what have you. Ozone, Fabric, they've all got, they've all got the uh, ability to sort out your peaks. So I'd say a lot of people should really look at that, especially for streaming. And I'd also say if if, if you're you know irrespective of true peaking if your peak is over normalize your file like you know I, I was saying this to mickey the other day um he sent over something from a very very well respected artist and i, I just said look it, it's just wrong like I, the, the tune's brilliant like don't get me wrong but if you if you you know if you can't just normalize it afterwards to minus one so that it's not clipping uh, you know every converter and every everything uh, I don't know what you're going to do. To me, that's just lazy. It's like someone painting a house and not cleaning up afterwards. Or, you know, it's it, 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 like it part of the mastering and mixing process. When your file goes out, it shouldn't be clipped. shouldn't be over 0 dB. Personally, I think it shouldn't be over on the true peak, but uh, that that I, 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 will let, I will let roll. You know, drum and bass is very out there, but it definitely shouldn't be over on your main file peaked. Um, which which some are now and again. Um, so just to have a listen to some other bits that got sent, um, what I'm going to do is show you how the genres are different now and how, you know, like your levels and your mixing down is tended to be to the genre that you're going to. Uh, maybe even the artist, you know. So some people, like say someone like Brake, he was voted, you know, best... Uh, a few years ago, best producer by producers, you know, by the scene sort of thing. Now, if you listen to his stuff, he is nowhere near as toppy on the top end. And and to show you that, I'll give you an example. So something that's a bit more dance floor, drum and bass, jump uppy, tends to be very in your face. So if we have a look at the analyzers here when we listen to this one, this is something by uh, T95, big up to Tom. Um, so if we have a look at this, just keep your eye on the analyzers and stuff. Now, I'm 
going to go into an Ed Solo tune and then a Benny Page tune. And I'll also pull up that Herb Man tune, Big Up Herb Man. Um, because, you know, this is where, like, Jungle, I find, doesn't have the same volume levels and the same push and brightness as drum and bass. So I've often f found us as serial killers, like, crossing the two, you know, like, vital elements on my own kind of make drum and bass. Serial killers, it's more of a jungle vibe, but we are very, very into our drum and bass and, and, and other stuff. So we've always made it with the idea that it has to stand up to drum and bass and be out and mix with it and not be so, like, up and down. So, you know... As the years have gone on, we've got louder, brighter, etc., to sort of keep up with drum and bass. Now, I do find that quite a few uh, jungle artists just don't go to those levels. You know, with jungle, there tends to be more samples, more music, more vocals, etc. When you're really pushing it to try and get it loud, it's very hard to get that sort of stuff into a level where it's not going to distort. Uh, if you've just got beats, bass, yeah, you can get that loud. When you've got beautiful musical parts, they start to distort the first when you're bringing them real, real loud because there's a lot of harmonic content to them and, and you know, they just shouldn't be distorted, basically. So I'll just flick you through a couple of others and have a look and listen at the levels. I don't know how good it sort of comes down the stream to actually hear the difference, but you can see in the analyzers the various different peaks that are hitting. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll roll you, um, I'm going to roll three tunes, um, Ed Solo, little clip of each, um, Herb Man with One More Time and Benny Page. And then after that, I will go to some slightly more jump up modern sounding ones, play the Shape of One again and the Sub-Zero uh, Ben Snow remix. And just, just let you see and hear the difference in presence and top end to the two different styles, like the Jungle to the drum and bass let's say uh ones that are more jungle orientated and and this is where as a, as a producer you know you have to find out where you want to be it's a good thing to go right i i like those mixes that are like that i think those ones are like the you know whatever you find the best um you know sometimes i find the jungle stuff like when i'm mixing it with drum and bass it just doesn't cut it it, it drops down and I'm needing to like t put up the, f the tops and the mids on the, on, on the thingy. Um, other times, some artists with it, it really does cut it. But then I find sometimes with drum and bass, it's just too pushed. It's just, you know, like 20 minutes of that in a club and you need to go outside because your ears are ringing because it's just all so distorted and all so pushed and all so clipped. So it, as, a per as an artist, it's a personal uh, preference. But yeah, like I said, we'll, we'll just do some... Uh, you know, looking and seeing different the difference in people's mixes um, and what you can expect and what you get. So that that's something from Ed Solo, very very good producer. If you look, if you look at the analyzer that's nicely frozen there for us, um, you know his bass and his kicks are right up there with everyone else. But his top end and mids, he's coming back. He's coming back. He's not slapping you in the face quite so hard as some music does these days, which, you know, will nauseate you in a club at a quicker level. Um, Herb Man, very similar. Uh, not quite the same on the top end, not quite the same on the presence. <laughs> Uh, he's a little bit more on the top end, to be fair, than Ed there. Um, and, you know, getting a bit more into the sort of drum and bass ranges. But again, not quite the sort of levels that drum and bass is. Um, so there you see Benny nice and flat. few dB off that te minus 10 line there. So, you know, you can see them all just hitting slightly less on that top and mid than, let's say, some of this. Now, that's like, you know, the sort of modern mix that you get um, that's very loud and in your face. Um, you know, do you want that? I would say it depends on the style you're going for. If you've got a tune full of, you know, beautiful vocals and chords and everything, I think you're just going to have to come back a bit. That's what I've found. Like the serial killer stuff, I don't get as loud 
as I do the vital stuff because it's just a different genre and a different um, sort of thing that's in it. Um, so, you know, it's all dependent, massively dependent upon what you're sort of going for and the genre that you're going for. And the, the difference between people's tunes is quite shocking. It really is quite shocking, um, you know, the levels. I find, like, Jump Up, you know, with most of the big guys, that's quite consistent. They've become quite flat along their frequency spectrum. The bass has come down a little bit. Um, everything else is much more out there. And so some of the sets where you play just that stuff, that, that that's a bit easier to, to keep level. But when you're going between different genres a little bit more, it can be a lot harder to get your levels right because of just how different the scene is compared, you know, d depending on what style that's being made. Um, so just to have a little check to see if there's any uh, questions and comments and stuff like that. Um, and I will have another little play. What ones haven't been played? Um, so let's have a little look through okay, a tune from Dave Masters. Uh, I have a listen through that one. Uh, I've had some stuff sent from Dave before, and um, like you, you know, the, the, the balancing, the leveling is, is always quite good. Uh, again, for drum and bass, it's just that sort of presence level. You know, like I said, for jungle, it's a bit low, it's a bit less. But for drum and bass, it's it's really out there. It's really hitting full frequency and full spectrum these days. So my recollection with this one was it's just not quite in that top end, in that sort of high, high mid and top end hitting with the, the drums and stuff. We'll have a little listen through it. I'll just check some messages. So you can see there with Dave's one, like it's really quite um, nice in the low end and what have you, and, and has all those like important frequencies. You know, quite often if you don't get them right, it really does sound a mess. And, and, and in a club when it's so loud, often the stuff that's not so toppy, you know, you can just listen to it for longer. You really can. Um, but I would say that you know when you compare that to the to the genre that that, that that you know you're dealing with it, it's just not pumped up in those high frequencies enough um we'll give you a sort of quick a and b you know you can see the snare hitting up there at like 3.5 it's like above 10 you know, the, 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 the sort of peak of that snappy snare that's sort of, you know, really hitting you in the face type thing. And then if you look at this, you know, you've got the 200 hertz snare, but there's nothing in that top end to give you anything. Now, years ago when stuff was mixed for vinyl uh, uh, and, you know, what have you, that would have been fine. You could give that to a master and engineer. They will bring it up a bit. They would never take it to the levels we are these days because it would just blow up the lathe and, and just, you know, you couldn't cut it. And that's something that a lot of the new kids, you know, sort of don't know about or are unaware of. And there's a lot of peaky frequencies in tunes now that years ago you could never have put there because they would not have cut onto vinyl. Uh, you know, you've got like some sound that comes in really peaky. It just would have thrown the whole mix out. So what they would have done is they'd have got your mix, got that peaky sound, EQ'd out the whole mix for that peaky sound and basically destroyed your mix um, because they're dealing with just one sound that's like problematic, too loud. And so these days I hear lots of stuff that technically in the vinyl days would have been really wrong but now no one's cutting it to vinyl so it doesn't matter and it's just completely changed and we've now filled the, the, this upper frequency much much more and and the what the width that never used to get filled to the same level um because you couldn't cut it on vinyl um so with, with dave's there it, it, it's nice that like his levels and everything are, are nice and what have you but for me what he's missing with the modern drum and bass is that presence and that sort of massive amount of frequencies hitting in the mids and top end that just weren't there years ago um and you know the, you, the, there's a lot of arguments about you know 
nauseating music. You know, you, you can't listen to it as long. Um, I say I, I can certainly stay in a night where they're playing vinyl over digital for a lot longer without earplugs and without getting hurt. So, you know, there's a lot to that. But I'll pull up K9's mix because, you know, K9's someone who's had some great, great success in the last year or two. Um, and, you know, a lot of different styles. And, you know, within this mix, you can see something that he's doing that I'll, I'll, I'll just sort of point out because this is the... For me, this is the sort of mix that Dave's after. Um, if we play it. What, what you'll notice there is how sort of ducked out those like horrible baby frequencies are, baby crying frequencies, but he's got the top end hitting with a snare. He's also got the bottom hitting with a snare. You can see the, the, the snare hitting around there at the 2 300 ish, and he's also got that top. So, you know, you don't have to have like completely full spectrum frequency, you know, the snare hitting right the way across if you don't want. Um, but I do think you need more than this sort of level because it just it just just isn't cutting through you know it's just being lost in the mix and almost sounding like it's got a filter on it to a certain extent when you compare it to the to the newer stuff and like I said Benny a little bit less like I'll tell you what Benny's club Benny's tunes sound great in a club like probably one of my favorite producers you know it's like dj and his serial killers there's probably not many other producers that have played more of their tunes than benny um and so that sort of like happy medium where he's not quite as banging as you you know you're like pumped up drum and bass that's just ridiculously loud these days um, and I don't think he could be because he's got so much music, so much vocal and what have you. you just, you're just going to ruin it if you try and get to those levels. Um, but he's got that sort of level where it's it's hitting, but it's not overly hitting. And I tell you what, that does sound good in the club. A lot of my best mixes that I like in clubs sound a bit dull when compared to everyone else's like modern stuff. But when it's in a club, it just doesn't hurt your ears to that same level. So I'd highly recommend that sort of mix. Um, I, I'd say the, the mix on here with, with Ed's as well, very nice club mix. Um, if, you, if you're going to want that to sort of stand up, like really, really stand up in the presence level to stuff modern, it would need a touch more tops. But I think, like I said, the jungle sort of vibe suits that more. Um, the, the, you know, like the dance floor stuff. <laughs> like this from tom i mean that's probably one of the better mixes that we've got here um it's, it's definitely good the, the leads are out there and in your face but not peaky the bass is loud the kicks are loud it, it's sort of quite flat i mean if you have a look at that one that, that that's quite a nice mix nothing too push. Why did this man deserve to die? And there you see the sort of jump up element of the mix where the loudest thing in that mix is actually the lead sound. That big growly lead sound is the peakiest thing, you know, it's peakier than the kick, the snare. And that's something you'll find with jump up and notice with upgrade stuff and a few others, you know, that big lead bass sound, you know, that's just sort of like the main hook, as it were. That has got to have a lot of presence, a lot of loudness, a lot of uh, decibels in the mix and what have you, uh, you know, so it's really cutting through. Um, so as you see with this, you know, I'm just flicking A and B and A and B and different tunes, different tunes. And of course, I've still got my tune. Here. So, you know, when when I'm happy of what sort of tunes that I want, that then all, all I have to do is just make sure that my level here with my Postmaster... So at those sort of levels, you can see I'm similar to sort of Benny, where it's like it's not hitting over on the brightness. I've got the nice heavy bass hitting up at minus five. My RMS as well, if you sort of look on the outside meters of these top ones here. Um, you know, 
I'm I'm sort of hitting minus three or so, like up into that orange there, which you know is consistent with a lot of other tunes and what have you. Um, and you know, not everyone's got this analyzer. Like I said, there's, un- there's other analyzers out there. Some of my favourites for for these things um, are the ones that I pulled up earlier. This one's free. If you get computer music, um, you know, just just you just download it, get the uh, um, the CD with it, buy it, get the CD, and then you can just literally like have all of the plugins that ever come with it. Um, you only have to buy one issue. I would highly recommend subscription to that. So basically, I get like birthday christmas you know family say what do you want what do you want you know rather than an amazon voucher i'm like give me computer music annual subscription and every month i get it coming through free free samples free things you know it's way cheaper than buying it full so yeah for your next christmas present or birthday get yourself subscription to some magazines or something like that that's giving you free content giving you free plugins and giving you um you know basically knowledge every week or month should i say um so yeah like i was saying all i would do would get this now to a level that i'm happy with and you, using various meters um to see the short term lufs to see the moment trees using this one up here to have a look at my mids and sides and the spectrum and also the scope And that's something, you know, I'm always looking at the waveform. I, d- I don't want it being so squared out. You know, if you, if you look at sort of different waveforms, um, you know, this was the one that I've not got the true peak clipped on. Uh, if you go in there, like, look at it. it it's, 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 it's actually still a little bit round. It's not completely and utterly, like, chopped and squared off. There's, there's still some beauty, you know. Yes, it is it is peaked and loud, but it's not that ridiculous block type of you know mix um where it's it, you know it's much more blocked off like that you know just straight cut off like for me you know you kind of want to keep a little bit of your dynamics in there and and that looks so nice purely because i've dealt with the true peak and made the true peak not clip and so, you know, I've got some like actual like, roundness to, to the mix, you know, and like I said, I can get that as loud as anyone else doing that. And the difference between them two, when it comes to putting it into streaming, Spotify, you know, YouTube video, encoding, all this different stuff, is basically it's going to read the one file and say this has no problems now we're going to deal with it it's going to read the other file as this is 3.6 decibels over its true peak we need to bring it down before it hits our encoders so already when you're over on true peak when it comes to these like platforms that are going to have your music on it for years and years and years you need to build it for them a little bit more. I really do think that. And that's, that's through personal experience. That's through listening to my stuff on these platforms and going, what does that sound like? Like, why does that sound like that compared to like an old tune that sounds really nice or, you know, just a normal commercial tune? So it's taken me a little bit of like actually listening to these various platforms and then going, okay, what's going on here and why is that going on? Um, as, as, to, as to, you know, come to this point where i've realized you know if you can get your mix with a true peak not clipped you're going to sound better on every platform when they're taking your file and dealing with it afterwards um so yeah this one is now ready to go out for mastering basically um and through the referencing system just pull it up to the level So, yeah, as you can see, very easy system for just literally having projects within the project you're working. So you don't have to bounce it and then go and listen, play it somewhere else to be able to tell if you're on or off or what have you. Within the system, you can be very close to what you need to be. And then at this stage, I would basically, you know, master that, um, send it out and just master it in an individual project 
where it would just have the f few tiny little touches, you know, if it needed a touch of brightness or a touch of brightness taken off or whatever it may be, would have that final and that just last, last little bit of just, you know, polish, as it were, to get it right. Um, now, I'm just wondering if I missed anyone's tunes. We played Herb Man's. Um, nice mix on that Herb. Um, big up. Like, your, your, your stuff's really come on in the last few years, um, Herb Man has. Um, some really nice bits. I'm often being perked up by his label. Um, Voodoo Magic. That was by... That was sent to me last night. That one. Shaper we've played. Davies one we've played. Um, was mostly on this one. You know, compression. Well, I say compression, just a little bit more pushing it, just 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 getting it, you know, into that drum and bass where everything's up. Um, and it, when you watch the sort of default video that I put up on various things, you'll see that I've got limit. I mean, that's a bit old that video, so I might have changed some plugins. But you'll see what I'm looking to do is to just control all my peaks going into each group. So here, you know, if you look at all my files, like they they're all quite level. You know, they're not like massively up and down with peaks and what have you you know even the vocals you know vocals usually all over the shop it's it's a really level level file um so what i'm doing there is just every peak's being dealt with beforehand so that you know when we're in this stage we can have it loud without all these like things going over too much you know um so yeah that's um a little look at my system uh, I've got a few sort of things open. I was sharing this on like quite a few pages, so like don't know if I can interact with anyone because everyone because I don't know which pages you're watching it on. But I'm going to have a little look on the vital one. So if any of you've got any questions, go over to the vital elements page, um, put on a question there. I'll see if I can answer it before I finish up. Um, and yeah, I'll leave it with that. I'm just gonna um, just see which ones I've played. So I've played system. Played that one. Uh, uh, deserve to die. Uh, I think we'll run out with Herbman, so I'll just have a little look and I'll let Herbman's tune go on because uh, that was quite a nice little one as well. just reading a few comments there someone saying my music doesn't have a peer group i like it i like it well most does like it basically released music if you're doing dance music if you're doing classical if you're doing you know chill out or whatever all i'm saying is you need to like present it to the same sort of level like i was saying here with this one like if, if i'm just random dj you know dj smithy or whatever and i get sent in 15 tunes from people if your tune is half the volume of everyone else's it doesn't matter. You're just getting ignored, quite simply, because you haven't presented it to the level that everyone else is at as standard. So that's what I mean by that. You know, um, I, I, I like the fact you're saying you haven't got a peer group. Um, if you haven't got a peer group, who's going to be your fans, though? You know what I mean? You have to could create a completely new genre, you know? Fair play on that one. Um, so a few other people just saying thank you for listening to their stuff. Um, that's cool. Um, I might do this a little bit more like I do I get sent an awful lot of tunes um, to listen to and it's really difficult for me to find the time to listen to everything um, so I think like you know especially in this lockdown probably a good way of doing it is just doing a little live thing um, so for any of you that is locked on and you know want to send me your tunes or whatever you like most people are sending me the tunes because you know they're looking to get stuff signed to serial killers etc uh, and you know some some's just looking for feedback because they see that i do all the production stuff and what have you but if you want to send in your tunes do so um i think what i'll do is i'll probably do another sort of live video like in a week or two 
maybe uh and just go through like every everyone's tunes that they're sending you know just sort of do like a little demos um you know video uh so everyone can just sort of hear their tune hear their tune against other things see how i look at it and analyze it and what uh and what have you and yeah uh do something like that um it's sort of really good for a lot of the artists to get you know a little bit of cut a little bit of exposure as well with their tunes um so yeah if any of you've got tunes send them in send them over like we transfer links are great just to dm them over we transfer link you know i'll gather them if i'm liking any obviously i'll be getting back to you we're, we're usually pretty good with that but we are long as well because it takes a little while and also um you know yeah if, if i'm feeling it or, or if i think it, there's something in it that could be shown i'll pull it up and bring it into one of these classes where we look at them um, so yeah, big up to everyone who's locked on. Um, just want to say thank you. If there's anyone interested in the masterclass for next week, we're running it from Monday, um, another two two hours a day sort of thing. Give it a uh, give Ben at hotcakes.info a shout on that, and yeah, he'll he'll sort you out starting on Monday. They're, they are available individually as well. And like I said, a lot of people are asking, does it matter what door and all that? It really doesn't. Like like I sort of go through. A lot of what I'm doing is just sort of talking about things, trying to explain them in a way that you can understand them and getting rid of some of the jargon and stuff and just trying to explain some methodology in a simple way and give you some pointers and, and, and tips and, and hints to, to what to look out for and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm not going deep in on like how to do this on Cubase or how to do that, uh, you know. Uh, Simps I'm using, I'm having a look at Serum, I'm having a look at Massive and stuff. But again, it's, you know, it's oscillators, it's envelopes, it's LFOs. It's not synth dependent. Um, so anyone who's interested, give Ben info um, at Ben at hotcakes.info a shout. And yeah, anyone who wants to send in tunes, send them over to the various pages. We've got the Vital One or the Graham, my personal Graham Warnock one, Serial Killers one. We're not always answering all the time. Like you know, you can link my personal from there. Um, so yeah, just send them in. And yeah, I'll do another little live one. So thanks to everyone who's been locked on. Um, like I said, to make more sense of this have a little look at my default video i posted up on my vital page um the youtube link and my personal one just before i did this so you can go and have a look and you can see how i color code things and group things and how i have reference tracks at the bottom so that at any point in the mix uh, at any point from starting the tune you can instantly see if you're near there and see if you're at the levels you need to be because it's very important in this music of drum and bass and jungle to have your stuff loud and up to the standard that everyone else is um so yeah hope everyone's uh, enjoyed that um and yeah uh locked on uh share share the video about i know you get a few on live but it can be watched afterwards so share it about if you found it useful if you've got any mates that are into uh producing um just you know share it about tell them to come look at me pages there's plenty of stuff that's going up Masterclass next week happening again so there'll be more videos going up and what have you and yeah thanks to everyone locked on uh like i said hopefully there'll be another one might do it next week if the masterclass will not take it up too much of my time but it might be the week after and um, we'll have a look at everyone's like new tunes give you a few tips and hit hints and yeah just 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 take a look and, and dissect them and big shout out to everyone who sent the tunes thank you for that and shout out to those who didn't send the tunes don't worry like you need to be able to take criticism you have to be able to take constructive criticism I still send my stuff out to people and they come back saying, you know, well, I'm not feeling that, what's that? Like, you just got to have a thick skin in this game. You don't get anywhere unless you get it out there. So just get your stuff out there, don't care, you know, go have, have some, um, you know, humility or whatever you want to call it. Have the balls to put your stuff out there, basically. Send it in and, yeah, we'll give it a look and, and we'll see if we can get some stuff for you. All right, big up to everyone who's been locked on. I'm going to sign off and, um, yeah, catch you next time. Um, anyone who's interested, uh, I'll see you on the uh, Masterclass next week. Big ups.